Okay, so let's start. Let's talk about number three. Uh, actually, so I think uh, this, this exam is scheduled for a week from today, but we don't have class. Is that right? So we have next Friday off. So we're going to push the exam back to the following week, following Friday. So Friday before Thanksgiving. Okay. So, but that means that we'll have some new material in between that won't be on the exam, so you can't forget. So the, the third exam is basically um, sequences and series. So you can't, you, there's going to be a, a gap now, so you have to make sure that we don't forget all that when we're working on the new stuff. Uh, but that's the plan. So we'll just have two days of class next week. Start some new stuff, and then we'll have the exam, what is that, the 18th? Is that right? Same format will be in here Friday. We'll go long if we need to. Questions about that? Yes, sir. Something like that. If you email me and bug me, I could do it earlier. But I, I won't if you don't bug me. <laughs> uh, okay, so this one uh, I know caused some difficulty in terms of entering your answer. So I want to do a similar one, not, not, not one from WebWork, but one that has the same issue uh, because I have a file for it. So I want to do this. x over 3 plus 2x squared. So let's do x over 3 plus 2x squared. And so we want to write this as a power series. So what's our first obstacle here? What's our first obstacle with this? Yeah, this is a problem, right? What is our what is our general form of a geometric series? A divided by Yeah, not 3 minus r. It's not any number you want. It's got to be 1. It's got to be 1 minus r. So we got to make this thing have a 1 here and have this has a minus, right? So that has to be a 1 and that has to be a minus. And then we'll have it looking like that. So how do we make that into a 1 but preserve the value of the ratio? Uh, factor out. Well, you want to factor out 3. So maybe maybe an easier way to think of it. So that, that works. Maybe an easier way to think of it is to multiply top and bottom by one third. So if I multiply the top by one third and the whole bottom by one third, then you see that that keeps the value of the the ratio, but that makes that a one. If we if I distribute that one third, so I'll have one third x equals one, and then we'll just, can I do the minus here in the same step? Minus what is it? Two thirds, negative two thirds x squared. So we just manipulated that original problem so that it fits this form a over one minus r. So now we're ready to go. We've got our a, we've got our r. So this is equal to sum of n equals zero to infinity. One third x times okay so now in the problem so we could simplify this we could gather some things together that's important that you should be able to, to simplify this we could put all our x's together so how many in each term how many x's do we have multiplied together there's x, and then x squared, and then to the n. How many x's are multiplied together? 2n, this is going to be x to the 2n, and then one more. So this would be 2n plus 1. Okay, and then we have, uh, we'll have a negative, so usually we pull out a negative 1 to the n. So that, that's that negative 1 to the n. And then I have a 1 third and a 2 thirds to the n. So there's different ways you could write this. Uh, for instance, 
So we could just, just do one third by itself and then two thirds to the end. So you could argue what's the most simple? Is it negative two thirds to the n? Or is it two to the n over th how many threes are there? Three to the n plus one. So so now now we're just kind of rearranging furniture, it doesn't really matter. But getting the x to the two n plus one it kind of makes it simpler. So do you see how that's equal to the what we had before? So now what they wanted in web work was, and this is you're gonna see this again in the future, is they want the coefficients of this form of the power series. So here's the key to this. The key to this is that the coefficient, this coefficient is when the power is n. So, so the C0 is when it's x to the 0. And C1 is necessarily when it's x to the first. And C2 is necessarily when it's x squared. So these, the C0, C1, C2, it's not just listing the first set of coefficients to this. It's tr it, they have to match up so that the, the nth coefficient is when you have x to the n. Does that make sense? So we need to write out our, we need to write out our series. Can, we, can, we, can I finish it? Maybe that answer it? Or is it? Go ahead. Yeah, let's, I'm, I'm not done yet. So. Let me finish it, and I might answer it. Okay, so now we, we got to write out what our series is. So we're going to do, so we see this, see this, think what, right? So you, you guys practice. See this, think what? Go, write it out. What does that signify or representing mathematically? All that yucky stuff. So, what was it? Mohammed, can you get me started? What is it? One third, so it all turns out to be one third x. You guys agree? Okay, and so what power of x is that? It's like one third x. So that's, that's this term right here, right? So this is one third x. Do we have an x to the 0 term? Is, do we get, so from this, do we get an x to the 0 term from this? No, when we put in n equals 0, the lowest we, the lowest we get is an x to the first. So what is our coefficient of x to the 0? So let's just keep going. So then, keep going. So then when n equals 1, what term do you get? You get when, when n equals one. What do you get? We do it together. So what will this be? Negative one. Good. So what we'll end up getting is negative what? Negative two ninths. Negative two ninths x cubed. All right. Did we get an x squared? Do we get x squared out of this? No, so we're going to just figure out what we're going to need to make this work. So one more term when we put in n equals 3. I'm sorry, 2, right around 2, right? So what do we get for n equals 2? So 
let's do the width. So is that four twenty sevenths, right? Notice we never got an X to the 4 term. So now if we were to list out these coefficients, so 0, so 1. So what are we saying? We need these coefficients so that when we set up this sum, it's exactly the same as our sum. So what were the coefficients, C0, C1, C2, C3, for this? give us exactly this, our sum. So we know that C1 is 1 third. We know that C3 is negative 2 ninths. C5 is 4 27ths. What about these even coefficients? We see that if they're 0, they go away, and then our series are the same. So we will see this again. So these first six coefficients in this form of the power series give us exactly, in this case, the first three terms of this, right? The first, first three. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Okay, good. So the, the problem is that you can't just list the first whatever coefficients because this is x to the 2n plus 1 and this is x to the n. And so we need the coefficients that match up with the powers. So we write those powers down. So when x, when x is to the first, its coefficient is 1 third. When x is cubed, its coefficient is negative 2 ninths. And then any, any powers of x we don't have, then we need to cancel them out with zeros. Get rid of them with zeros. Question, anybody have a question? OK, so I have this. Uh, we can see graphically what's going on like we did last time. It's, it's good. Can I erase what's up there? So, oh, we never did the interval of convergence. So how do we get the interval of convergence? Ratio test. Did I write that right for a n plus 1? OK, negative 1. We get 1, negative 1, but we're going to take absolute value. It doesn't matter. This goes away. What does this give us? 2 thirds. One more 2 thirds on the top, right? And we have two thirds. How many more x's in the top? You should see there's two more x's in the top. 2n plus 3 versus 2n plus 1. So we need this limit to be less than 1. And this limit, there's no n involved. So this limit is just that. And so squared, so we don't need the absolute value at all. So we have x squared is less than 2 thirds. So we're asking, what are the, all the x values that are less, the sub squared gives less than 2 thirds? OK. And so really, there's negatives in here too, right? So it's not only the square root of 3 halves, but anything from 0 down to negative 3 halves will make this true. Do you see that? Or square root. Here's our interval of convergence. And we need to test. Typically, we test the endpoints, but I'm just going to bypass that for now. I think if we test the endpoints, they're gonna, it's going to be divergent. 
just to guess. You know. But uh, so this is our without without figuring out what the endpoints are, we should do that. But I just don't want to take the time right now. This is our intervals for for the sake of graphing it. So this so big picture. This function y equals x over three plus two x squared. has that power series is there a different way Th this power series will reproduce this function for these values of x only where this converges right so if it doesn't converge it's not going to be equal to this this function say for instance at 5 at x equals 5 this has a finite value, but this is divergence, right? Well, that's because x equals 5 is outside of this range. But if you have an x value inside of this range, then if you were able to add up all infinitely, infinitely many terms, you would get this function, x over 3 plus 2x squared. So let's see that in action. And so then we know the partial sums are estimates of that function. And the more, more terms you take in a partial sum, the better the estimate. So is this what we got? One third x, negative two thirds x squared n. I think I didn't, I forgot to write the x. But this is, this is right. Okay, so then let's do it here. Again, I can show partial sums. So the first partial sum is just the term you just the one term you get when when you just take little n is zero. So first of all, here here is the actual function in that range. Okay, here's the actual function x over three plus two x squared. If we just take one term of the sum when any little n equals zero, we get this line. And so you see that that is correct at zero, it looks like the, even the first derivative is correct. If I take the first two terms of this sum, here's what I get. So the, is it the red one is the estimate. If I take the first two terms of the sum, I get that. So you see already, already it looks really, really close all the way from like negative 0.5 to 0.5 and then it, and it strays off outside of 0.5. I take the first three terms, the x to the first, the x cubed, the x to the fifth term. So every time I take another term, I get a longer partial sum. I get a better estimate of that original function, x over 3 plus 2x squared. So here I'm taking more and more terms in the, in the series. The way up to there's 10 was that x to the 21st right so that when all the way up to the x to the 21st term 2n because x is 2 x to the 2n plus 1 so now it's it's really doing a good job all the way up to about negative 1 to 1 and right at the end it's, it deviates off so these, so it's like we can, we're replicating these functions, these rational functions with polynomials. The more terms in a polynomial that you take, the better it does at replicating the original rational function. Okay, any questions on that this example? Okay, so let's try something new. So what makes this, what's our obstacle here? Yeah, one minus x quantity squared. So now we're deviating more from our from our form of one minus r, right? 
So we have to be creative here. We have to be creative. Think about how, how we can how we can get this. 3 over 1 minus x quantity squared. So you might think, all right, let's multiply it out the bottom. What if we multiply it out the bottom? 1 minus 2x plus x squared, right? So then we have 1 minus this, so 1 minus 2x minus x squared. And so then our r would be 2x minus x squared. So that would be valid, but really ugly. Just think about what happens, right, in the power series. Think about when n gets really, really large. You have to do a binomial expansion. You know, the higher the power of n gets, the more and more terms you get. So the, actually, the number of terms is, uh, is it the same sign? Yeah, because you're going to march down that much. Yeah, so, so the number of terms you get is really whatever n is. So when we get up to a million, the, the one term when n equals a million has its own million terms. So it's not desirable, OK? So it makes sense. It works. But it's not, it's not desirable. So we want something else. So what is this kind of like that we know we could do? So what, what is this very similar to that we know we could do really easily? No, no, no. Which, which function could, that's kind of close to this could we represent with the power series really easily? Yeah, tell me, tell me what it is. So maybe we could start with a, another function that's kind of close to this that we know we could do. Super easy. What? 3 over 1 minus x, or one, even one, my, 1 over 1 minus x. So how can that help us get the h function? What's the relationship? In, and essentially, what's the relationship of h to f? Do you see what the relationship is? What could I do to f to get something really close to h? You see this is 1 minus x to the minus 1. This is 1 minus x to the minus 2. Well, then, but then we'd be multiplying two power series together, right? So that, that's not going to be efficient. Yeah, do you see that this is essentially the derivative of this? And when we do a power series, what do we have? We have a polynomial, right? Polynomials are really easy to take the derivative of, right? Because we, we, we just have these terms of polynomials. That's like the easiest derivatives we know. So we can let's find what f of x is. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of it and kind of clean up any mess that we have with factors to kind of reproduce h from, from the derivative of f. OK, so f is as easy as could be. What is it? So you write out, write out uh, the summation notation and all the terms, OK? This is, this is as easy as it gets. Write out the summation notation for f, and then write out the first four or five terms. Did you get it? Tell me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you get it? Hopefully. All of you got that too. Okay, so right, that's just our a r to the n, and then what does that mean? That just means n equals zero. You get one. One equals x, etc. 
Okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to take f prime. And we do this, we're going to, we're actually going to take the derivative in all three forms. Okay? And it's really good to write out these, the terms of the series because that's going to be our check. Okay? We, we can check to make sure we're doing it right. So we're going to take derivative of f. Okay, we're going to take the derivative of f in this form, 1 over 1 minus x. What do we get? Is it 1 over 1 minus x squared? Almost. Negative 1, right? Okay, and then let's do the terms next. So what do we do? We just took the derivative of f prime, or derivative of f. So derivative, go. Derivative of 1 is. Here, derivative of x, 1, negative x, negative x squared. Sorry about that. Yeah, if you have 4x cubed, that's great. I'm out of room. Okay, so now, and we can do it in the summation notation too. We just take the derivative of the generic term. So, derivative of x to the n is n x to the n minus 1. And if we start at n equals 0 and go to infinity, do, does that generate the exact same terms that we did one by one? So th now this, so now we can check it. This series needs to generate these terms because we know these terms are the derivative of that. So as a check, we can check this way. Does it work? n equals 0, you get 0. n equals 1, you get 1x to the 0. n equals 2, you get 2x to the 1. There it is, 2x to the 1. n equals 3, you get 3x to the squared. See? So it works. So now the question is, what's h? What's h? What am I going to do to f prime to get h? So I've got negative 1 over 1 minus x squared. I want positive 3 over 1 minus x squared. So what am I going to do to f prime to get h? Multiply by negative 3. And I'm going to do that in all forms, right? I'm going to do that in all forms. f prime times negative 3 will, we know is h. This is, and then that's 3 over 1 minus x squared. So that's just going to be 3 times this, or sorry, negative 3, right? Three. Uh-huh, yep. And then negative 3 times each one of our terms. And then again, so what did I do? I, 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 I worked vertically. I worked vertically, and so now I want to check horizontally. See that? So I, I did negative 3 times that. I did negative 3 times that. So now that sum should generate these terms if I've done all the math right. And it does. So I put in 0, I put in 1, put in 2. I get those terms. Okay, so everything got multiplied by negative 3. Now, if I want, I can, so this, this would be valid, but I could shift the index, right? So if I want, I want my first x to start at, if I want it to be x to the n, I don't want to do that. Then I'm going to start putting in the 1. I'm going to stick this. This is not the time to shift. It's not the time to shift the index. But there it is. Okay, so let's, and now we can find the interval of convergence, just like we've always done. So we do negative 3 plus 1, x to the n over negative 3, n x to the n minus 1. n equals x to the n over n, negative x. And what are we going to get for our interval of convergence? This limit, this n, as n gets big, the limit is 
1. So therefore, the limit of the absolute value of x has to be, so we have our standard interval. Let's do the, the endpoint check quick here. So when x is 1, we get negative 3n. Divergent or convergent? <coughs> negative 3n. Clearly divergent, right? The sequence diverges. I put a negative 1, I get x to the, oh no, sorry, negative 1 to the n minus 1. So that's just going to make it alternate, right? So it's going to be negative 3n, it's going to be alternating now because it's negative 1 to the n minus 1. Still divergent. So we get strictly between negative 1 and 1 with a radius of 1. Questions on this example? So what did we do? We took a we took one that was close related by derivative, and we found that. I took the derivative of it, and then I said, what do I need to do to the derivative to get the one I want? I'm going to multiply by negative 3, and that gives me positive 3 over 1 minus x squared. So then I'm going to multiply every form of it by negative 3. The summation form, all the individual terms, and then that line that shows us what exactly h of x is as a series. Yeah? Uh, no, because rate of change requires a continuous function. Right? Looking at a rate of change requires that you could you could zoom in and have local linearity of a curve. You know, so not really. We're u we're using derivative point wise, but rate of change is really going to depend on a continuous function. Does that make sense? So if you, yeah, if you had a function like like this. This is, this is what these series are kind of like. They're, they're, you can't really talk about rate of change unless you have a continuous function, which you don't. Other questions? Okay. You guys try this one. See how it goes. So what... So if I take the derivative of that, I won't get this, right? Or something close to that. So what do I want? 1 over? Yeah, we want to do 1 over 1 plus 2x is what we want to do. There's dx. Okay, so what do we get when I take the derivative of 1 over 1 plus 2x? Or 1 plus 2x to the minus 1. Derivative is? negative 1 over 1 plus 2x, but chain rule, right, chain rule, times 2. So we get negative 2 
over 1 plus 2x squared. Did you catch it? Oh. 1 plus 2x to the minus 1 is minus 1. 1 plus 2x to the minus 2. Okay, I forgot the square. By the chain rule, you got to multiply by the, the derivative of the inside function, which is 2x, so that times another 2. Yes, sir? Um, to the negative 1, right? So this is 1 plus 2x to the negative 1. I'm taking the derivative of it. What n times minus two x to the n minus one Times negative two. Now this is the easy part, right? Derivative one at a time. Zero minus two eight x. And then we want to check now horizontally, right? So I took the derivative vertically here on this, the summation form. I took the derivative vertically on each term. So therefore, this needs to equal that, right? So that summation needs to generate these exact terms as a check of what we're doing. So let's just do n equals, uh, say, 3. Make sure we get the right thing. When n is 3, I get 3 times 2 cubed, or negative 2 cubed is 3 times negative 8 is negative 24 x squared no 4 I got this is right so n equals 2 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 times no n equals 3 one more try n equals 3 negative 2 times 3 is negative 6 and then times negative 2 squared, which is negative 24. And then n equals 3 gives me x squared. So that I got that term. OK, now i got to get to f, right? So this is how what I need to do to this to get the function f. I need to multiply by negative, first of all. I need to div have a divide by 2 and then an x. So I'm going to. times negative x over 2. Which gives me this thing that we started with, x over 1 plus 2x quantity squared. Here we go. Times negative x over 2. So what will that do? That will, that negative 2 will be gone. So that will be the negative 2 part. And if I multiply by x, then how many powers of x do I have? n. You see that? So, the neg so by multiplying by this negative 1 half, the negative 2 is gone. And I have to multiply by x. So x times x to the n minus 1 is just x to the n. So I'm going to have n. I'm going to have negative 2 to the n minus 1. I'm going to have x to the n. Did you catch it? Negative 1 half gets rid of that. Times x gives me x to the n. But I still have negative 2 to the n minus 1 inside there. OK, so now we'll do that to all these two. Times negative x over 2, 0 plus x, 
minus 4x squared plus 12x cubed minus 32x to the fourth. And now I want to check this way. We'll just trust that it's right. So, so this right here, if it's right, it will generate these terms. So it's like polynomials is the, the hardest thing to screw up. We're pretty confident about what we're doing with these terms. So we use it as a check for the summation version. I want to just start, look at one more, just so you, you, you can just look at it. Just look at it. Let's back, back up this way. Questions on this example? Yes, please. Yes, yeah. It's, it just confirms that you're doing this right, because this is where, this is the most important thing, that you get this sum of the formula, and it's the easiest place to screw up. And so by doing, yeah, by sticking with these, this is like our, this is a, what we trust the most. Because derivative is easy, multiplying by factors is easy. You do it term by term. So now those terms need to be what you get when you add that sum. Is there another question? Let's just look at one more and just figure out what, how we would start. x squared times natural log of 1 minus x squared. So can we give a shot at what we could do easily that relates to this? So what relates to this that we could, let's, I'll call it f. What f function? So we need to look like what? a over 1 minus r. So what's the easiest one that kind of relates to a over 1 minus r that relates to j? One over, you see this right there, right? So we know we could do one over one minus x squared, piece of cake, right? That's a nice easy one. So what could we do to f to get something like j? Do you see the antiderivative of 1 over is natural log? So antiderivative. But when we do antiderivative, what do we need? We need an x. So we want f of x not to be 1 over, but x over. Now we can do the antiderivative because what is undoing the chain rule, right? We've got that x along with the 1 minus x squared. So if we start with f of x, get that power series, do antiderivative of f, we'll have what? Opposite of natural log of 1 minus x over 1 half. And then we can adjust it to get j. See what happened? Okay, if you want to keep talking about it, I'll stick around. Um, so we're gonna we need to do like a bank of uh, just series from the book written. So just keep watching Blackboard. Don't it might there might be written work. Okay, keep watching Blackboard for written work.